backstage when Meghan had asked to borrow Catherine's lip gloss. He describes how Catherine was taken aback by this, eventually found some and grimaced when Meghan squeezed some out. Harry put it down to a small clash of styles and then blamed the media <gasps> for sensing something was up and trying to turn it into something bigger. To me, it sounds like it was getting bigger by itself, Harry. At the time, the optimists among us put the strained expressions and forced smiles down to nerves or at worst, teething difficulties. But as we'll find out, things really were bad and about to get worse. To the wedding of Harry and Meghan now. And what should have been a very happy family occasion for all was anything but for Catherine. There she is, mm. is holding the hand of Princess Charlotte, who was one of the flower girls. And remember that Catherine had given birth, so being on public display in, and so much in the spotlight, you know, would have been stressful. And also William was, wait for it, acting as best man. So, you know, he wasn't there. She was very much on her own looking after the children. Look at Catherine's face. She's almost unrecognizable from the, you know, relaxed, happy Catherine we Fact. know. The most likely explanation for this is her rouse with the emotional bride before the event. Princess Charlotte was a bridesmaid, and it is generally accepted that there was a row over her outfit in the run up to the big day. Catherine, who would have been exhausted after the birth of Prince Fact. Louis, and according to Tom Bauer, Catherine was already cross with Meghan over her treatment of staff, claims Meghan denies, by the way, and Catherine was unhappy with how the bridesmaids' outfits were handled. Meghan claims Catherine made her cry, but if So that was a f***ing lie. Of course, Catherine would never speak publicly about this herself. Other stories, though, suggest it was Meghan who made her cry. There was also the suggestion that Meghan had said Kate was suffering from baby brain when <gasps> there was a mix-up with a pre-wedding meeting. Harry claims Catherine said, you talked about my hormones. We are not close enough for you to talk about my hormones. Catherine brought a bunch of flowers to try to mend the relationship, but that only served to paper over the cracks Stop it. of what was becoming an ever deeper rift. Back to the pictures. And one of the shots that I think is most striking is this one. I mean, look at how the bride and groom seem to be talking to each other. Okay. But the guests are talking among themselves. You know, rather than focusing on the bride and groom, William and Catherine are talking to each other. King Charles is chatting away to Meghan's mother, Doria. But it, what? It seems very much that the focus was not on the bride and groom. You can only wonder why it was that Catherine didn't want to look at the happy couple that day. And I suspect it's because of a lot of what had gone on before. With the wedding and honeymoon out of the way, Catherine, Wait for it. Catherine and Meghan were brought together at Trooping the Colour. So at Trooping the Colour, it was one of those events where very much a reminder to Meghan of what her status would be in the royal family. Whereas she may have been hoping for a... Okay, I'm listening. You have my attention. You know, leading role, here it was clear that she'd be playing a secondary role. She'd have to be standing behind Catherine. And she does look quite awkward in that position. I mean, look at their expressions. Wait for it. They look as if they're trying to look away from each other. They look uncomfortable in each other's presence, frankly. Megan peering out from behind an uncomfortable looking Catherine did seem to sort of set the tone for their relationship in future. Okay. Despite the very difficult start to their relationship, Catherine extended the hand of friendship to her sister-in-law in July of that year by inviting her to the Wimbledon Tennis Championships. This was a big deal. Catherine, you serious? Catherine is patron of the All England Tennis Club, and so an invitation to Wimbledon from her showed how much she was making an effort with that relationship with Meghan. I think you can, however, see in here the strain on their faces. What? It, it doesn't look really like they were having a relaxed afternoon watching the tennis together. Catherine's expression, it, it's far from that. Usually when you see her watching the tennis, she'll be looking totally relaxed. You know, it's her sort of happy place. Fact. Whereas here, she looks strained as if she's making the effort. She knows she's going to be photographed but she doesn't seem to be enjoying being there with Meghan at all. In his book, Revenge, Tom Bauer writes, Meghan's smile looks more forced than usual. So that was a f***ing lie. The physical comparison was unflattering to Meghan. On her own, Meghan's radiance won universal applause, 
But beside the taller, authoritative future queen, the Duchess appeared diminished. Neither could conceal their mutual discomfort. Bow what? Bauer also points out that despite this show of friendship, it was an unhappy summer for the two couples. The then Cambridges refused to stay with Charles and Camilla at the Castle of May when the Sussexes were there. And in turn, Harry and Meghan rejected an invitation to Balmoral. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, come look at this. Moral. The then Duchesses couldn't avoid each other at the wedding of Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooksbank in October 2018. Looking back at these pictures, it's surprising how often we see Meghan looking at Catherine. You know, instead of looking at the happy couple that day, Meghan's eyes seem to be directed entirely towards Catherine. Again, we see William and Catherine at the front, reflecting their position in the royal family. Okay. And then Harry and Meghan standing awkwardly behind. And look who's next to Meghan as well. That's Princess Michael of Kent. Now, you might remember that she felt the need to apologise to Meghan. What? After the first occasion that they met, it was a Christmas lunch at Buckingham Palace, and she wore a, a, an offensive brooch to that lunch, and she felt she had to apologise for that afterwards. OK. The Commonwealth Day service was particularly important to the late Queen Elizabeth, and all the royals would know to be on their best behaviour. It might also be why this was chosen as another day when Catherine wanted to try to make things up. We see the pair kiss on both cheeks at the start of the event. Vanity Fair revealed that a palace source said this was deliberate. Catherine wanted to end months of rumours of a feud. And we can see in this embrace, it's, it's pretty awkward. We've got Fat. Catherine kissing Meghan on both cheeks and Meghan sort of putting her arm around as if she wants to embrace Catherine. But look at that, it's not really being reciprocated, it's not Stop it. really an embrace, it's a sort of awkward grab almost. I think as public shows displays of affection go, it's not the most convincing. But this photograph though does illustrate how Catherine is a peacemaker. And wow, I remember this set of photos from the time. And now I look back on them, they're even worse than I thought then. They are among the most photographed and talked about women in the world. Their contrasting styles and personalities were said to be key to the future of the what? British royal family. Instead, Catherine, Princess of Wales, and Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, had such an unpleasant fallout that neither were on speaking terms. Neither Catherine nor Meghan were siblings or heirs to the throne. Okay. But both princes value their wives above all others. They were their anchors after fractured upbringings and their shelter from the storms of royal life and public opinion. The differences between the wives cemented the split between the brothers and hardened the resolve of both sides. In this video, I'm going to look at how it happened through the sometimes incredibly awkward pictures of them together over the years. This picture was taken... <laughs> hey, y'all, come look at this. ...taken at a time of great optimism. You can almost see it in the closeness there that, you know, the, the nation was waiting for the birth of Catherine's baby and they're looking forward to the wedding of Harry and Meghan. OK. In this picture, you can see them outside church at Sandringham. Their heads are bowed or their the women are preparing a curtsy because Queen Elizabeth is about to arrive. And it really symbolises their, their happiness, that spirit of optimism that we had back then. In fact, in this picture, there's no hint of any trouble to come. What we do see as well is the outfits that the women are wearing. Meghan spoke in her Netflix series with Prince Harry about how she had to wear subdued colours when she was a member of the royal family so as not to cause any difference between her and Queen Elizabeth, not to outshine her. Here we see her in a camel coloured coat and it was, if I remember rightly, it was her hat that attracted a lot of interest for rather Unkind reasons, you, you could say that it was compared to a certain emoji. This is the first time really that we'd seen them pictured together and it was fascinating at the time to observe their chemistry between each other. Fact. Now we move on to their first public appearance together and the moment when they were christened the Fab Four by um, 
by the media. Now, members of the royal family generally carry out engagements. Wait for it. Engagements separately, and it is rare to see so many together. So you can imagine the interest that this created, having these four young, glamorous members of the royal family together at this same press conference, <laughs> which was to publicise the Royal Foundation, which Harry was a member of and which Meghan was due to join as well. Look at the body language here. In the first of our Reading the Royals episodes, we talked about the relationship between William Here it comes. William and Harry. But it's even more interesting to look at the relationship between Meghan and Catherine. To me, when I look at this picture, you know, they all look quite awkward. Are you serious? You know, particularly William and Harry with those expressions, they you can almost see them biting their lips. But the only one who seems to be absolutely delighted to be there is Meghan. She looks pleased as punch with that expression. And I think it, it looks like she really did feel, this is my moment, I'm joining the firm and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the boss. The pictures people would have seen online and in the following day's newspapers would have been positive. The Mail pointed out that all Wait for it. flies were on the pair, sitting centre stage and smiling constantly. Catherine, who was by this stage heavily pregnant with Prince Louis, smiled and clapped when Meghan was introduced by William. <gasps> but the mood was nervous and slightly tense, with none of them really looking like they wanted to be there. One reason could have been what Meghan was saying. As my colleague Rebecca English said in her report at the time, Meghan also showed she has no intention of steering away what? from controversy as she championed female empowerment and a bold public endorsement of the Me Too and Time's Up campaigns against sex harassment and inequality. Honourable causes, but a clear potential clash with politicians, which is the last thing the royal family wants. You do wonder if a line in William's speech where he said, the task for us would not be to reinvent the wheel. Could have been aimed at his soon-to-be sister-in-law. We later learned from Prince Harry's book Spare <coughs> that there had been an awkward moment backstage when Meghan had asked to borrow Catherine's lip gloss. He describes how Catherine was taken aback by this, eventually found some and grimaced when Meghan squeezed some out. Harry put it down to a small clash of style and then blame the media for sensing something was up and trying to turn it into something bigger. To me, it sounds like it was getting bigger by itself, Harry. At the time, the optimists among us put the strained expressions and forced smiles down to nerves or at worst, teething difficulties. But as we'll find out, thing okay. things really were bad and about to get worse. To the wedding of Harry and Meghan now. And what should have been a very happy family occasion for all, was anything but for Catherine. There she is holding the hand of Princess Charlotte, who was one of the flower girls. And remember that Catherine had given birth, so being on public display in, and so much in the spotlight, you know, would have been str what? stressful. And also William was acting as best man. So, you know, he wasn't there. She was very much on her own looking after the children. Look at Catherine's face. She's almost that doesn't make sense. Unrecognizable from the, you know, relaxed, happy Catherine we know. The most likely explanation for this is her rouse with the emotional bride before the event. Princess Charlotte was a bridesmaid, and it is generally accepted that there was a row over her outfit. 